Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and to delve into the challenges and impact each technology has in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The BIS monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Reliance on BIS system alone for intraoperative anesthetic management is not recommended. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA-cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers received funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for the speaking engagement. For this segment of the series, a discussion on anesthesia and the brain, we will discuss how biz-guided anesthesia can be used in managing TIVA. To help answer this question is Dr. TJ Gann, Professor of Anesthesiology and Distinguished Endowed Chair at Stony Brook University. Let's just take a look at uh, the effect of biospectral index on uh, using TIVA in managing our patients. So there are really two studies here and then followed by a Cochrane meta-analysis. Typically, if you use this, you will find that you can reduce the amount of anesthetic, and in this case propofol, by between 20 to 30%, as shown by the BISC clinical utility study, uh, by the box guy study, and as well as the uh, uh, Cochrane meta-analysis, about 25 to 30% drug reduction. Next. So let me just tell you a little bit about these two studies. So the first study is the base clinical utility study, where uh, we published a study back in 1997. In fact, it was the study that was used for FDA approval. And it is uh, the study designs that we randomized 300, about 300 patients, one group where they receive standard of care and where we titrate the anesthetic based on clinical signs, blood pressure, heart rate, and autonomic signs of the patient. The other group where we titrate the anesthetic based on this. So the algorithm is that we keep the base between 45 and 60 during the case, and about the end of the case, 50 minutes prior to the expected emergence, we keep the base between 60 and 75. And that is really the design of the study. So what do we find? Well, we uh, found that the propofol use was about 23% less, as I showed you earlier. Next, we also found that, uh, okay, this is the other study, where they also basically looked at 120 adult patients for ENT surgery. Um, they have a propofol group, a uh, sevoflurane group. So they, again, within each group, they randomize a group within standard of care, the other group with standard of care and BIS. So they titrate BIS between 40 and 60 in either the propofol group or sevoflurane group. So very similar study design. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series wherever you find your podcast. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.